Hello, everyone. My name is Peyton Spear, and I'm the admissions demonstrator here at the Culinary Institute. I first began my education at CIA in January of 2017 for my associates in baking and pastry arts. In that time, I did my externship at the Four Seasons in West Palm Beach, Florida. And then after finishing my associates, I came back for my bachelor's in uh, business management, where I spent my final semester in Puglia, Italy for the Italian cuisine concentration. So I'm so excited to get to talk to you all today about all that CIA has to offer. And for our demonstration today, we're actually going to be covering part of a series that we've been doing, which is the physiology of taste. Because your tongue can only detect five areas of taste. There's salty, sweet, bitter, umami, and sour. And for our demonstration, we're gonna be covering bitter, which actually gets a pretty bad rap when it comes to taste, but it's so key in so many of our favorite foods, whether it's chocolate, craft beers, or coffee. So what better way to pay homage to my time in Italy while also covering a key um, dish that has coffee and its bitter flavor in it than tiramisu. It's gonna be nice because we're gonna switch it up with a seasonal twist. So we can definitely use this if you wanna make it at home for your friends and family. So to start off with tiramisu, we're gonna be making our own homemade lady fingers. You can definitely buy these at a grocery store, but I figure it's such an easy technique, but it's really nice because we get to cover a technique that is so key in fundamentals of baking and pastry, which is a separate foaming method. So for our lady fingers, I have my separate foaming method by I have my egg whites, which are separated from egg yolks to egg whites to make a meringue. So right now I just have three egg yolks and then I've got about 60 grams worth of sugar. And the reason that I don't put my sugar in beforehand is because the eggs can actually get cooked by the sugar as they're sitting. So I'm going to take with my whisk and I'm gonna get these until they're light and aerated. And the separate foaming method can be used in many, many dishes, whether it's with um, your own Genoise sponge cake, with buttercream, or even macaron. And you can see this aeration is really combining our sugar and it's getting those eggs into a lighter color. And that's one of the key things that I'm gonna see whenever I know that my eggs are ready. It's gonna be that lightness in color and then also the aeration. And when I'm whisking, I'm going in a circular motion. I'm not going back and forth, but I'm really using that surface area of the bowl. And you can already see, not too much work, but a lot of variation is coming through. And I use a larger bowl because I want to have a good surface area, making sure that I get all of those eggs, all that crystallization. And in doing this, I'm also making sure that I don't have sugar crystals where it tastes a little grainy. I want to have everything well combined. And nice and thick, so this is going to be one of our stabilizers because lady fingers are very delicate. So we want to make sure we have as much aeration as possible whenever we're baking. You see they come this opaque color and that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm just going to get all of my excess off of my whisk because I don't want to waste. And then in here, I have some French meringue that I've made. With French meringue, it's the most delicate of the meringues because it goes through a, it doesn't go through a cooking process with the eggs. So it's going to be very delicate and we want to work very fast with it. So I'm going to take my rubber spatula and I'm going to do a method which is called a sacrifice, which is where I'm just going to put about a quarter of my meringue in and I'm going to combine it with my egg yolks. And I do that because I want these two mixtures to be as close in texture as possible. So I don't wanna have too heavy of a mixture to pour into my meringue. So I'm going to the sides, down to the side, down to the side, flick of the wrist, until it's fairly well combined. And you always wanna pour light into heavy when it comes to combining um, your foams or meringues. So that way you don't have something super heavy going into and collapsing all this air that we created. Now I'm going to grab all of my meringue. I don't want to waste any of it. I always recommend get as much of it from your bowl as you can because sometimes chefs will come by your stations and want to see your empty bowls. And they do that because they want to make sure you're not wasting product. So it should look like you've almost cleaned it a little bit. 
or wash it, so make sure your bowls are clean. <coughs> and then I'm going to go in that similar, or similar motion of just back and forth. And I'm going to stop as soon as these get to one color because I don't want to keep overworking it and losing that aeration. And we're just about there. But yes, and you want to make sure that it's all combined in one color. Otherwise, whenever these bake, you're going to see that certain parts of your lady fingers are browner than others. So we want to make sure it's all well combined. Perfect. Now I'm going to scrape the sides of my bowl. And now I'm going to add my sifted flour. And you can see that the quantity for the foam versus the flour is not very much. So we're going to add in about a third of the flour. And I sift it to make sure that I don't have any clumps in my lady fingers. Very delicate. And I do it in a third because I don't want to shock this meringue and have it be too heavy. So again, it's similar to that sacrifice method where we're sacrificing a little bit of this aeration to make them as close as possible. Perfect. If you're ever making a batter, you always want to add your flour, your dry ingredients in sections. So that way you don't have clumps. And it's easier to combine. Alrighty, I'm going to add in third. Perfect. Yeah, trust me, if you ever make this, your friends or family will definitely be impressed that you make your own lady fingers. I'm going to do my final round of flour, making sure that I scrape all the sides again. And you'll see too that I'm putting away my bowls as I go. That's because I want to have a clean station while I'm working. Because if you have a cleaner station, it means that you're going to have a better product. And I'm making sure that I keep the rims of the bowl clean so that way I can grab onto it with my hand and have good control. And you can see that our batter is starting to come together. And it is a very loose batter, which is totally fine. That's exactly how it should be. Now I'm just making sure I'm getting all the way to the bottom because you can see that there's still some flour at the bottom. We don't want to have that. Perfect. All righty. I'm going to scrape the bottom, make sure that's all well combined one more time. And the reason that I don't press down whenever I'm mixing, I'm really just using this part of my spatula, is because I don't want to put too much unnecessary pressure and lose all these bubbles. I think we are just about ready. Perfect. So you can see it's got that nice little set. It's loose but it still maintains its shape for a second, for three seconds. Perfect. So I'm going to put my lady finger mixture into a piping bag. And the piping bag doesn't have a tip on it, but I do like to have it in a bain marie or a bowl of some kind. So that way I can hold my bowl and use my rubber spatula and have control. Scraping the sides, making sure not to overfill. I'm going slow because I want to get as much air bubbles out of my bag beforehand so that way my lady fingers don't have any air bubbles in them. And this is going to smell a little bit like pancake batter, no lie. But essentially, I mean, we're using eggs, we're using flour. It's a very simple ingredient, but the method that we're doing is what makes the difference. I'm going to take my piping bag, make sure that I don't have the top go and spill. You don't want to overfill your bag, so you want to have about this much room of empty space for your piping bag, so that way you have control over it. 
Then I've got a lined parchment paper sheet tray. I'm just going to twist the piping bag with my right hand. I'm going to pinch the top. I do this so that way I can stop because it is a loose batter. And I'm going to pipe these into little circles because we're going to make individualized parfaits of tiramisu. So I'm going to pipe into a little circle, pinch, release. Pipe into a little circle, pinch, release. And I'm piping rising up because these will spread a little bit, but I want them to maintain that aeration. And I'm giving them a lot of space because they will spread when they bake. And really, you can pipe these into any way you want. There's the traditional lady fingers, which is the pretty much like a rectangle or it looks like an eclair. Or you can pipe them into the little circles like we're doing today. It's really just whatever you're looking for. One more time and we'll have our little sheet tray ready to go. Perfect. And now I'm going to put these in the oven for 375 degrees for 15 minutes. I go as quick as possible because I want them to capture that heat and that aeration. So I'm going to wipe down my station a little bit. We want to have a clean station to work with. And then next, we're going to work on our our, our our soup filling. So we're going to come over to our station. And again, I have eggs and my sugar. And we're going to use the double boiler method. So I'm going to pour in my sugar. Take my whisk. And I do this over the double boiler because I want these eggs to become food safe temperatures. And I'm constantly stirring because I don't want them to scramble. And I have my thermometer here too, so I can make sure that I get them to the proper temperature. And the reason that we're putting this over the double boiler, even though it's the same ingredients as for our lady fingers, is because these eggs aren't going to go through another cooking process. Bring that nice aeration. Checking on our temperature. Boop. And we're already 110 degrees, so I want them to get to about 165 degrees. So we're fairly close. It doesn't take very long for them to get to the proper temperature. It helps too because I did keep my eggs at the room temperature and not cold, so we don't have that shock that comes from it. Honestly, it's always best whenever your ingredients are at the same temperature because they'll better combine. 139, definitely getting there. Hundred and fifty, very close, very close. Just a little bit more. There we are, perfect. Now I'm going to use my rag because this bowl is going to be a little bit hot and we don't need to have any real birds around Halloween. So I'm going to turn off my heat and then I'm going to add in my bloom gelatin sheets. I do bloom gelatin because it has the least amount of um, water content, so it's going to cause the least amount of change within your dish. And also, it's a fairly clear color, so it's not going to change the color at all. Perfect. Make sure that it's well combined. I don't want to have any clumps in it either, so I'm checking. But I do want to work fast because once it gets to a room temp, this gelatin is going to set and it's going to become a little bit harder to pipe with. So you might have creases and ridges and we don't want to have that. 
So now we are going to get our mascarpone as well as our whipped cream because these will be a part of our mixture. And you can do this with a KitchenAid of whipping it to where there's a lot of aeration. But I want to show you guys how CIA does it because we do like to do things the hard way first and then work our way up. Because you never know what you're going to have available in the kitchen in terms of tools. So I'm getting that aeration going. And again, I'm looking for that light fluffiness, the lightness in color. And the gelatin does help because it keeps everything in place. Now it's starting to thicken. I'm also going to add a little bit of green food coloring. So that way we have this spooky season coming in. You can add as much or as little as you want. We're going to kind of go all for it because why not? All righty. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anyone remembers Nickelodeon and getting slimed, but this is exactly what that reminds me of. Nice for getting that aeration. It's looking really good. And now I'm going to add in my mascarpone. Mascarpone is great because it is a creamy type of cheese and it's perfect for desserts because it doesn't have too much of its own flavor except adding in that creaminess to it. If it doesn't combine too well, then I can always put it over the double boiler as well to make sure that I don't have any clumps of mascarpone. So I'm gonna whisk it together, try to get combined with my green slime. I'm gonna put it over my double boiler just so that it combines and gets the proper temperature. And you can already see it's breaking down fairly quickly. Mascarpone is really good for baking and pastry because it has this creaminess to it. It's not quite so chunky like other cheeses, like for example, Gorgonzola. So it comes together very well. Also goat cheese is great for that too because the fat content is fairly high. So we're letting this come together. You can already see it's breaking down, but I don't wanna have any of these little clumps in it. It's nice too because if your gelatin is ever going too fast, you can always add on the heat to it and it will help bring down that gelatin so that way it's not quite so set. Looks like things are coming together very nicely. Perfect. So I don't have any clumps, so I'm going to take it off the heat because the heat is going to keep from that aeration really coming through. Perfect. Yeah, whoever said bakers don't have muscles, like, trust me, we've got some guns on. We're good to go. All right. And I want to get this to a loose, medium peak. Because we are going to be piping it, so I want it to maintain its shape. Alrighty, we are just about there. Perfect. And you can see it's still a little bit loose, but you can see that aeration. You can see those bubbles in there. And part of the reason that I want it to be a loose, or, or a loose peak is because it's also going to be combined with a stiff pink of whipped cream. So that'll definitely help on holding it. But also I want to make sure that it's not too hot, otherwise the cream will lose its aeration. All right. Perfect. And now I'm just going to take a little bit of my mixture. I'm going to combine it with my meringue. Or not my meringue, sorry, my whipped cream. Perfect. I'm 
I'm scraping all of the sides again. Now I'm going to slowly be incorporating my cream. And we go in stages because this might be too much or too liquid in consistency. And then I can always go, but I can, um, or I can always add more, but I can never take back. So again, just folding it over. I'm going to add some more of my mascarpone. And I really want to get that Halloween green, so I might just add a little bit more coloring to it. Just about there. So we're adding a little bit more coloring. And then one more round of our mascarpone. You can already see that gelatin is starting to set up. And that's exactly what we're looking for. We're working fast, but we're not skipping any steps. Chefs will tell you a term that will always stick with you, and that is a sense of urgency. So you don't want to skip steps, but you definitely want to work quickly. Otherwise, you'll be able to tell little parts of your product that have er, uh, switched because of it. Oh, we're getting this spooky green color. I love it. Scraping the bowl, it's just about ready. And we've got this loose peak, loose to medium peak, and that's exactly what you want to look for when you're piping with a mousse. So that way it's not too stiff and you don't have aeration bubbles. Alrighty. So this is our tiramisu filling. And I have a piping bag for it. I have an 808 tip. I'm going to fill my piping bag as much as I can while still having control. Alrighty. Now, same as before, I'm just going to grab my parking bag and twist from the top. Now, the only difference is because this has a piping tip, I've twisted the tip and pushed a little bit of the piping rag into it, so that way I don't have any of the filling coming out whenever I'm filling the bag. I'm going to have this here ready to go. Clean up my station one more time, and then we are going to get ready for our plating. Now, because we don't have the power, or we don't have uh, that much time for our lady fingers to cool off and get ready, we're going to use these beautiful lady fingers that I made earlier this morning. So I'm going to put my gloves on. And the one great thing about tiramisu that showcases that bitterness is the coffee. So I have this beautiful coffee that I got from Apple Pie Bakery along with our chai base to add to that seasonal flavor. And with my lady fingers, I put these into two separate sizes of cutouts because I want them to fit into these individualized parfaits that I'm using. So to start, we have our smaller parfait or our smaller lady finger. I'm going to coat it on both sides. You want your lady fingers to have a little bit of crunch to them, so that way they can withstand this moisture from the coffee. I'm going to drop it in, push and make sure that it's all the way at the bottom. Again for our second one. I'm squeezing out all that excess coffee because I want to be able, that I don't have any puddling of coffee at the bottom. I'm gonna pre-soak these so that way I don't have to go and switch over from my piping bag, piping bag to my lady fingers. So I'm gonna get all the lady fingers I'm gonna use for my layers done. 
perfect. And if you make your own lady fingers, these are perfect if you bake them and then use them three days, but they can be frozen and stored up to eight weeks. Alrighty. Perfect. So I'm going to keep these here, make sure that my station is organized and perfect. So now we have our lady fingers, time to make the layers. Now I'm typing the parsets. I don't want them to have too much filling to where they can't see the lady fingers. You want to be able to see the layers. So I'm going to pipe but not press, I'm going up until it's level in a circular motion. And then I'm going to drop my, oops, second layer. That's the front. It's not broken unless you can't fix it, as my chef would say. I'm going to go again, and I want to make sure that it's level. So I'm going in a circular motion, but I'm not going up with my piping bag. So we can see these layers. You can see the little lady fingers. And this is my larger of the cutouts. I'm going to go one more time with my filling. And for our garnish to go with the Halloween theme, I've got a couple of different techniques. One of them is going to be these eyes that I have. I don't know if you all have seen Monsters, Inc., but Mike Wazowski was always my favorite in that movie. So I always think it's fun whenever you have this green color. Put them all in there. We're going all in, y'all. Perfect. So we have one of our ghoulish dishes. And then next we have the traditional part of tiramisu, which is the cocoa powder, which is another example of bitter. So I've made my very own little cutout stencil. And you actually learn this in one of your classes for baking and pastry. You learn how to make cutouts, how to airbrush cakes and everything. So taking a moment of education for sure. And I'm gonna lay it over, make sure that it's a flat surface. And then I'm just gonna take some cocoa powder. I'm going to lightly put it into my sifter and you can see cocoa powder's moisture is very predominant. So that's why I do the sifter. I don't wanna have clumps of cocoa powder because it's good in small quantities, but too much, and the bitterness can overtake the rest of the flavor. And all of these parts to the dish really do complement each other. With the bitterness to the sweetness, you want to make sure that you have everything that's enhancing the flavor and the taste. Perfect. So I've got my stencil. I'm going to take off my glove because I don't want to have any excess cocoa powder. And then I'm gently going to remove the stencil. And then we have two beautiful seasonal dishes.